Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for kickoffs and kick ons. <laughs> Yes, g'day and welcome once again to uh, Kickoffs and Kick-Ons. That's right, it is the Coco Show. Now, uh, for many, many weeks, we've had lots of complaints about the genuine lack of forwards on this show. Ah, oh, we hear too much from those stupid backs. Can we get some decent footy brains in there? Well, guess what, folks? We have listened, and today it is the Prop Pod. So if you have a penchant for props, if you love a loose head, if you get a funny feeling in the pants for a front rower, then today the podcast is all for you and all about you. Uh, so, hey, listen to this lineup. First of all, for all you Wallabies fans, a man that is, well, he's second on the list of all time Wallaby caps. That's right, it's James Slipper. He will be sliding into our filthy DMs. Can't wait for that. And then for you, Northern Hemisphere legends, you NHLs, none other than a man that spent a lot of time. <laughs> In the English engine room, it is Joe Marla. He will be joining us right here on the podcast. I reckon he. Uh, I reckon he's the cut of our jib, old Joe Marla. Yeah. Um, Similar haircut to our very own Goitan. Yes, he's just. Have you still got that? Oh, let's bring him in real quick. Yeah, he's the back. Um, yeah, I need to whip it up. I'll whip it up before Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah make sure good. you whip everything up before Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. Start at the ankles, <laughs> work your way up. <laughs> Those three voices you're hearing, it's our very own back line. Uh, let's go uh, Matt Giddo first, hello there. Then we've also got Adam Asher Cooper and Drew Mitchell. Uh, folks, hello and welcome. How's Canberra going, Gitz? You haven't come in today, mate? No, Easter. It's Easter Easter Monday, so it's a time for the family. Except for the afternoon, it's now the arsehole hour, so this is perfect timing for me. You've been replaced by a beef eater barbecue. I don't know if you can see that. Oof. I don't know if it's a permanent it. replacement. Is it Ollie or is it? It is okay. Um, it's a beautiful barbecue. Four burners, Gits. Mate, we've got. Uh, looks like we've made wholesale changes to the set. We've got a welcome mat. There's a fridge. There's all sorts happening. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I don't mind eating beef. Beef. Yeah, you're a beef man, beef. Yeah, I'm a beef feeder. Well, and, uh, I've got got one here to replace you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Like a nine volt battery. <laughs> Have you cooked a few sangers for us today? Oh, I have actually. I whipped up a couple of. Do you want me to do them now? Oh, yeah, well, go well, on. We'll do it during the super. Nah, sizzler. do it now. You oh, want it now? Yeah, nah, shit. Nah, yeah. they want it for the super sizzler. Oh, ah. the, yeah, the beef eater super sizzler, and also the bar fridge, gents. That's beef eater as well. Wow. And it's stocked full of an unnamed beer that I won't say because we keep giving them a plug every what week. What don't they do, Prof? <laughs> beef eater. They do everything. Everything. What do you need? Well, Gits needs I need a, a rest. Friend. Pretty tired. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> I need a nap. Yeah. Is that your sauna behind you, Gits? It is. Yeah, new addition. I love it. I just need the uh, cold plunge. That's why I keep pushing on. Do Beef Eater do a cold plunge? Do we know about that yet? Uh, I'm just going to ask Ollie, do the Beef Eater do a cold plunge? Uh, appliances Online do a, a cold plunge, apparently, and they provided the Beef Eater <laughs> stuff. So, what about uh, them from day, day one? Yeah, I just, maybe you just need to send them your address. I'm not sure how it's working. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> hey, how was your Easter, boy? Sorry, yeah, yeah, can yeah, we yeah. just like address the elephant in the room? Like, is your poor reading? Is that the motivation for you wearing those those no, goggles? I mean, no, listen. I, goggles. So all the all the jokes you were doing about me being unable to read turns out my eyes were fucked. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> so you hit forty two. So what? You got a bit sensitive and went, "I need to go and check my eyes." No, I said, "Look, I've been one of the world's great readers for a long time, so I better go check them out." And yeah, it turns out. Really? I need the goggles. So yeah, I went right. for the porn master. Yeah, went didn't for the you? French. Is he still there, boss, or have they gotten rid of him? Oh, he's still there. He's still for there. For now. Yeah. Until there's some sort of French coup. Is that what happens? <laughs> that <laughs> happens a fair bit. Uh, how was your Easter, boys? Do you. Mate, you know what? <clears throat> Quiet weekend, which was welcomed uh, after the birthday week shenanigans. Uh, it was nice to have a quiet weekend. Consumed a few eggs. Um,. Yeah, pretty quiet. But also, I'm just bloody filled with anxiety for this trip to Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking nervous for this. Uh, you're making the rest of us nervous. Because I, I was thinking it'd just be this nice little trip where we all get to know each other. But you, one of the first things you said when you walked in today was you're nervous. Well, mate, it's notorious for undoing a lot of people, uh, myself included, the previous trip. So 
Uh, and, you know, with the whole gang going over there for, what is it, five nights or something, holiday swoop. Swoop's like, oh, is, you ask, is there anything you need? Swoop, he goes, oh, rest. <laughs> We're about to go to Hong Kong yeah. for five days. <laughs> you will be a broken man come next Monday. I'll be fine. I'll, uh, yeah, look, everything everything will be fine. I thought your anxiety levels were <laughs> through the roof, not because of Hong Kong, but because first day of work tomorrow. Yeah, first day of a new job tomorrow, so... Starting in at Savills. If anyone wants to buy or sell a, a pub or a hotel, come to me. I'm the I'm your guy. But they can only find you for one day of the first. <laughs> yeah, week I go week, for. Right? So I, I met my new boss a few, couple of weeks ago. Went into the office uh, in the city there, and he said, "So, mate, you're going to be starting the second of April uh, on the Tuesday after Easter." I said, "Perfect." Just to let you know, I'm going to Hong Kong <laughs> on the third. <laughs> so will you you'll probably take a, a day on Monday, will you, when you get back? Well, and then maybe ease in. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what time we get back in. I think it's Monday morning. Might have to go home. Shower up. I've already got the suits and shirts ironed out for the next couple of weeks because, like I said, I'll be pretty broken by the time I get back. But look, there's an office, Savile's office up there in Hong Kong. I go in, show the face, write everything off and <laughs> make it a, a bit of a tax, taxable trip. <laughs> Mate, very good. Hey, I think we My should... My weekend was nice. Thanks for Did you for do yours yeah. then? Huh? Sorry, I skipped you. Apologies. Yeah, no, it was, was a night, it? lovely weekend. Yeah, went up to Palm Beach. A few, few beach days. Yeah, of as we hours. said, Adam's married well. The in-laws have a nice little pad overlooking the whole of Summer Bay, yeah. as Trans- they say. Transition's been pretty successful. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, I'm just tired, Prof. Four days with the kids. Usually oh, I can only mate. do two, which is the weekend, yeah, and that's yeah. enough. Yeah. No, mate, you're, you're preaching to the choir here, mate. Four days, mate. Four, yeah, with the two. But there's a man that's done up with three. Goit, mm. you, how you feeling? Oh, mate, it's important to have cousins. you got to have family around. So we, um, Friday with the family, yeah, mum, dad, brother, sister, uh, both brothers, uh, sister, they've all got, everyone's got kids, so it's good. You just drop them off and then we just sit in the corner and have a few beers. So it was very easy for me. You know, I was thinking was we were one day off having the best Easter ever because if Easter Sunday was today, mm-hmm. we're recording on the Monday here, it's April Fool's Day. Uh, How good would it have been telling all the kids, yeah, yeah, yeah Easter egg hunt in the backyard? No eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, ah, Just keep April looking. Fools, no, they're out there somewhere. Looking. Yeah, keep going. Keep looking. Hey, speaking of April, April Fools, um, who wants to reveal that little thing that we put on Insta? Do you want it, Drew? It was your idea. Uh, well, it wasn't my idea. Well, kind of no, was. We all yeah. just threw in ideas. Uh, yeah, look, sorry to say, we aren't doing an alternate commentary. Um, for the internationals in 2024, we just sort of threw well, Not out. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, but you know what? It was actually a little bit. Um, it was tactical. Yeah. Threw it out there. There's some took the bait. Um, your mate Alex Corbacero, your roomie over there in San Diego, gets he he took the bait pretty hard. James O'Connor, yeah, a couple they, of people. Well, they just beat uh, Miami as well, and they're in Miami, so oh. I reckon he's probably a few deep as well. Oh jeez. It would have been. I mean, it's the it's nice because it's support. Yeah. So they're putting it on their stories. No. Brian Habana. Like it's nice that they want it to happen for us. Yeah. But sadly, mm. it's not. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? If a Huge response. World Rugby, I know you watch this. Who, who at World Rugby am I talking to here, guys? Um, the boss. Hey, the boss. Bill Beaumont. Bill Beaumont. Sir Bill Beaumont. Sir Bill Beaumont. Hey, we met him in Perth. Mm. Sir Bill Beaumont, Billy. I know you watch this. Look at the overwhelming response. I think you should get us to do an alternate commentary for all internationals. Yeah. We'd do it for a great rate. Um, have a go, Billy. Yeah, have a go. Uh, merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't an April Fool's joke. People think it was. It wasn't. Yep. Um, we we sold out very quickly. And big apologies. We underestimated the, well, what people wanted. We didn't think anybody would buy them. Um, we, it's 500 that we, you've got to buy stock, right? So you go, well, how many do you think we'll sell? 500, that'll keep us going for a couple of months. Turns out we sold them out in 24 hours. Wow. Which is good. I mean, it's, it says two things, right? We underestimated the demand, but also that there is a demand. So... We're so going again, are we? We are going again. So yes. we're in the process of buying more stock and we will sell more. Um, you can see the shirts here. They are fantastic. Thanks for your support. And thanks to all the people that abused us online for not having them available for you. When will they be available? Uh, well, we're hoping next week. We'll, uh, we've got the big Hong Kong show next week. Yeah. And we'll oh, do the fuck. big merch. Do you not want me to mention that we're going to Hong Kong? I oh, know. I just get a little shiver. Um, yeah, and guess what? Hey, big sizes. We're gonna do big sizes. Your XLs, your four XLs, your seven XLs for all you uh, big thick boys out there. <laughs> Thank girls. girls as well. Girls as well, or your big thick girls out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, quadruple XLs for everybody. Yeah, because um, they were uh, they were also a few complaints about that. But, um, 
<laughs> sure really weren't not. big enough. I think there's a few big boys walking around with crop tops. Wow. I didn't know <laughs> we'd in Wales. trouble for not clothing the thickness. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's us. We, look, we don't know what we're doing. It's very clear. <laughs> Socials. Uh, X and Insta. TikTok, we are kickoffs and kick ons. Find us on there. Our socials are up to 14.1 thousand on Insta. Wow. Yeah, growing very, very quickly. Uh, YouTube, we are up over the 10K mark. We are up over the 11K mark. Wow. Oh, mate, yeah. killing it. Getting oh, nervous. Oh, me too. I wish we'd said more than 50K before I went and got hair plugs in Turkey, um, but that's okay. Uh, how many more weeks? 14 more weeks? I think so. 14 more weeks. All right, very exciting. Um, social snitches, let's do it real quick. Oh, yeah. You know how we're asking people to send in oh, right. old pics and old videos oh, of you guys? Oh, this is my favourite segment. It's mine too. Yeah? Um, it makes me nervous, so. <laughs> Yeah, this is a doozy. This show just gives me buddy anxiety. Look at this one here, boys. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, this is... <laughs> Talk about the 9-volt battery. Uh, now, Tommy... Fa- <laughs> Tommy, uh, <laughs> just explain this. Uh, <laughs> swoop. You're at the back. Can you explain this to people listening that can't see it? Um, it's very human caterpillar. Very um, human caterpillar. <laughs> centipede. <laughs> That, that one too. <laughs> and she doesn't Sue have a centipede joke? Yeah. You do. Oh, and people have been asking for your... What's the joke they've been asking Bullfrog. for? Bullfrog. Yeah, oh. we'll do that later on. Hey, can you explain what's happening in this picture? So you, you're all lying on the floor. Go for it, Swoop. Because remember, there's people that can't see it. That's right. So I can't remember it uh, specifically, but it looks like that we're just kind of getting into each other's adductors <laughs> slash groins. And also getting a really good uh, view of each other's nine volt. Um, <laughs> look at Drift. If, I don't know if the punters can see it right now, but Drew, you look like you're really enjoying that view. Um, as you would be too, because Goyd's got the tidiest of nine volts. Um, however, I am I am not showing much interest with the nine volt in front of me, which is Drew's. Yeah, you're off me because I've got tights on. <laughs> yes. You're off so, me. I'm not giving so, you much. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surveying the buffet right there. <laughs> Just having a look at what I'm going to dive into next. Thank you. Um, and uh, that was uh, Eve that sent that in. Uh, oh, thank you, a, Eve. She's a Pilates instructor or something. She just wanted to know what the stretch was. Mm. She wants to get her class involved in that. Very. Is that right, Tommy? She wants to get the whole class doing that. Uh, fantastic. So if you do want to send something in, if you've got a photo of the boys uh, at kickoffs and kick-ons. Hey, we're about to get old slips on the line, but before we do, we've got to do a bit of a rugby roundup segment. Let's uh, let's get through these if you don't mind. Sure. Crusaders thirty seven, Chiefs twenty six. Is this the superb roundup? Soon we're going to start with this. Oh. Sorry, this is the superb ra- roundup. Yeah. Then we get into the superb sizzler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all very confusing. Yeah. Crusaders off the duck egg. Uh, congratulations to them. Um, why did they beat the Chiefs, Drew? You're the expert here. What's the go? Uh, well, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the Crusaders have started poor. They've generally started poor previous seasons, but not as bad as they have been. Um, I think it was DMAC out for the Chiefs. I don't think he played at 10. I think that probably had a little bit to do with it. But, I mean, I, I think the thing with these Kiwi sides, they concentrate on the breakdown. You win those battles in the physical areas. Uh, and then off the back of that, you've got, you've got um, opportunities to play off the back. The, I think, is it... Nickel or McNickel or yeah, Johnny he, McNickel. Yeah, he came After back. Years, He'd yeah. been away for a period of time. He came back, slipped straight in. Um, I don't know. New Zealand seemed to welcome people back, um, and they get dividends straight away. Um, I don't know. Maybe Tars could do with someone like a Kurtley Bill mm. at the moment. Ooh, no, yeah. Strong argument there. He's floating around. Have you spoken to KB? Is he looking to? Yeah, he's um, blue. Yeah, spoken to him a fair bit. He's still obviously been involved in the Ramwick stuff. Um, playing with them, they didn't have a game over the weekend, but. I just think someone like, with his type of experience as well, with a young, young sort of tens there, at Edmed and Will Harrison. He, he played with Will Harrison the week before, had a good combination with them. But I mean, it's, this isn't just about KB. I just think it's great for McNichol to come back, but straight away show the value of experience coming back into a squad that was doing poorly beforehand. I'm not saying it's all down to McNichol, but um, you know, there's a, a fair argument to say that um, experience has a that's a pretty big uh, impact. Absolutely. On the Waratahs, Rebels, they defeated them 27-21. But again, another match where they were right into it, right up and right up until the death. Um, you're the Tars man here, Swoop. What's, I mean, they every single week, we feel like they're about to win and they lose. What's happening? Oh, look, I think with the Tars, look, they're putting themselves in a position to win. And whether or not they're, they're being accurate in those critical moments uh, is another story. But you could just, I mean, if you watch the game, you could see that it was a frustrating watch. The Rebels as well, you know, there's a lot of drop ball, a lot of error. Um, 
both teams found it really hard to to find their groove, um, and so it lacked the momentum that I guess for us as a spectator and a rugby tragic, you know, it, you know, it, it was it was a struggle to to really enjoy the game to watch. It was a, it was a genuine scrap, and it always is between two Australian teams. Um, I mean, if the Tars and the Rebels are serious about making the eight and competing in the top eight, you know, they're going to have to fix those those basics. And no doubt they'll go back and, and review that game and address that. But, um, yeah, it's a disappointing watch. Uh, there's nothing really needs to be said. Yeah, that. well, I mean, tries were few and far between, you know, for both sides in that game. And on multiple occasions, both teams chose to deny an easy three and go for the sideline and then lose that subsequent line out or a few phases later turn the ball over. I don't know. I just think that – I mean, I was – I was like that as well when I was playing here in Oz, is always go for the sideline, back your cells and all that. But if, if your set piece isn't working or if things aren't working in your phase play and you're not actually creating those opportunities, then you've just got to take the three on, on offer. Um, I think too many times now, and it's probably right the way through, um, rugby here in Australia, Super Rugby, but also a test match, we don't, we, we don't see the value in building a score and scoreboard pressure, and especially in games where tries are, are hard to come by. Um, I don't know. I, I think I was pretty against it growing up. I, I, mm. so, you know, I'll admit that. But when I went over to Toulon, playing with someone like Johnny who would sit back in the pocket, take the three from field goal or every time on penalty, I, it, frustra- it frustrated me at first. But then you start to feel it and you go, okay, hang on a minute. This is, this is, why, this is why someone like Johnny is as good as he is because he's just, he just builds that pressure on the oppos- opposition team, you go back the other end. You get, you know, you've, you're creating uh, opportunities because you're controlling possession territory. I don't know. I think we probably need to start to shift the mindset a little bit about how we build scores and put pressures on opposition. However, there were glimpses of some world class football from the there Tars, was, like yeah. the couple of tries, a couple of sequences they went through. The yeah, their ability to keep that ball alive and play offload football and play on top. Um, of the Rebels. I mean, that was some outstanding tries. Lockie oh. Swinton looks good. Mate, didn't he? What about his gas? Gas? Yeah. Where did that oh, come shit. from? Well, yeah. I, I thought also Will Harrison, he'd been out for a long period of time, came off the bench and actually he added something. He was he looked pretty sharp. And well, and Taniela Dupo off the bench mm. was the other one who proved to be the difference. A couple of scrum penalties and yeah. that try. Is he better suited to coming off the bench? Gits? Well, it doesn't look like he's got a huge engine at the moment. I think, um, obviously, he's coming off the back of some big injuries. I think it's a safe play, really, for someone like Daniela just to introduce him 30 minutes. He's he's powerful. If you see him coming onto the field when you're a little bit gassed or you're starting to get tired, automatically he asks questions. Even if you don't use him, use him as a decoy, he's going to sit defenders down naturally. But, you know, the power and everything he possesses, he's obviously a handful. And, and you can do that when you've got someone like Semi Talakai who's getting through 50 minutes of good, solid work as well. Like he's, he's very much underrated, Semi Talakai, and, uh, in, at set piece, but also you know, offers a fair bit, hitting rucks and, and getting that quick ball for the Rebels as well. Yeah, Semi so. T's a beast. Two who else is a beast and who played well and should have got probably MVP? Derby Lancaster. Yeah, he goes right. Mate, he's a young Mitchell. You reckon? If you ask me. Yeah, well, I, I saw him at the uh, Aussie Sevens in Sydney last year, and he was stand out there and mm. thought maybe you know if, if Eddie was going to pick a smoky it could have been him <laughs> he, he picked about 15 other smokies instead but um yeah I think Derby Lancaster certainly got something what about uh the tool shed one wing Lancaster the other may I tell you Ooh. what that's a good shout prof Ooh. hey thanks guys no more rugby hey we've got a lot of um superb rugby to chat but there is a man that is waiting on oh line. yeah uh he's joined us right now so what we're gonna do we're gonna come back to the next game we're gonna jump ahead to the Brumbies game um, you're looking for a beer here. Yeah, here we go. Keep going, hey, um, Slips, uh, we like to start with a little intro from Tommy. Have you seen the show at all, Slips, how it rolls here? Basically, Tommy that's never on camera writes a piece that insults the guest and then we have to make up for it after he's done it. Have you seen it? I've, I've seen a fair bit of it, yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Let's see what he's got for you. I'm pretty used to it from these three. Okay, <laughs> this might be tame then. Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest this week is one of Australian rugby's favourite sons. He is the epitome of an undersized overachiever, a powerful prop who thinks he is a number 10 trapped in a big bopper's body. Along with his silky skills with ball in hand, his real light shines at scrum time, working opposing front rowers to breaking point, so much so that they wish they were wingers. This fella has played the most super rugby games of any Australian, and he is closing in on Gregan's test cap record. 
it is fair to say wherever this guy goes, records fall. So please welcome one of rugby's remaining golden ollies, the man who was Eddie's go-to when he wanted to have a chat about all things hardness. He is <laughs> the big slip from the glitter strip, the one and only Mr. James Slipper e. Slips. Hey, guys. Hey, that was a very nice intro. Yeah, I thought that was pretty tame. Well, yeah, what do you guys want to say about it? I don't know. We'll get there. Oh, yeah. We'll get into the excursions later. All right. So let's, because we're in the middle of the superb rugby uh, chat, we'll just, we'll do your game real quick. Slips, congrats on the win against the Reds. Massive win up there. Brumby's 20, yep, defeated the Reds 19. You guys must be pretty pumped about that performance. Yeah, a few sore bo- uh, bodies this morning, uh, that's for sure. But it was, yeah, it was a good win. Um, we knew we were going to go up there and have a pretty tough game. Uh, the Reds have been pretty good this year. So uh, uh, we're pretty happy to get the result. Before you go up to to Brizzy, what what's said in those team meetings? Like, what areas of their 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 game or their team did you want to target, and did it, uh, um, did it pay we, off? Yeah, well, we we wanted to go after their breakdown. Um, you know what we've seen from the Reds is they play like a high tempo attack game when they've got the ball. So, um, and you know they've got players like Tate and stuff around the around the ruck who, with giving quick ball, they're pretty dangerous. So. Um, we just wanted to, I guess, stall them a bit there, take their moment- momentum away, and then, um, yeah, just build pressure on them. Obviously, with the with you boys, you're tested early with the injuries. You know, obviously, Lockie Lonigan. What did he do? Did he um, was it yeah. his ankle dislocated? Was it? Uh, it looked like a carbon copy of Drew's one. Oh, I was thinking that. Yeah. So, what what year was that, Drew? That was like uh, 2010 at at Suncorp as well. Something yeah. like going on with that pitch. Yeah, and it was in a similar spot too. So it, it didn't look good. Like the foot was going the other way. And um, uh, yeah, it was just one of those accidents on the footy field that he, he don't like seeing. But it was pretty funny, actually. He was he was chuckling out there. Um, Is that because of the uh, green whistle? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I was seeing the whistle. He was, chat- he was pretty chatty the, that night. I'll tell you that. I, that yeah. Look, I didn't like the ankle dislocation, but he's... I was in a good space after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I was flying. Yeah, were you thinking of doing it again when you came back? Um, you? Wow, I just wanted to get my hands on a couple of those whistles. <laughs> Very good. My actual gotta... second question to that was just like the depth. You obviously got to be happy with you know the way the boys responded. That's a big injury. I mean, it, it can affect a team, but you boys stuck at it and were able to get the win. Yeah, we're we're pretty blessed with uh, with hookers in the in the team, um, like. Uh, yeah, you know, we got young Billy who came on the field and he started a fair bit this year already. So uh, he hit the ground running out there. Um, but yeah, at, across the board, the Brumbies are pretty pretty deep in our squad. So we're, we're very lucky in, in in particular in the hooker role. So um, losing Noss isn't isn't great for us. He's a, like an integral part of our team. But uh, we got the players there to, to step up, which is all, always nice to have. Stivo, we've been talking about Tans, we're talking about Noah, and it's been a hot topic, I guess, amongst the podcast this year. Noah, obviously, was you've been playing with Noah for many years now. He's went over to France, had a bit of a shift over there, came back. Are you seeing a bit of a different Noah? Because he's, he looks settled, he looks confident, he's playing really well. I mean, what are your observations on, on that young buck? Yeah, like, obviously, a very quality player. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of been shown... Will put in the deep end from the from the get go in his career, and what I've seen from him coming back from France is just a bit of composure around around the game. Um, you know, you saw the other night. You know, we were, we were under uh, under the sticks in the first two minutes, so um, the pressure was on us for the majority of that game. And the way he led us around, along with the forwards, um, you know, like goes to show that he's got that temperament in his game and. All good tens need that, and I think Noah's building that nicely. And the other thing I've seen, um, like his goal kicking, mm. essentially won us the game the other night. Um, so, you know, every every five eight over in the northern hemisphere can kick a ball. So he's been working really hard on that, and it's a big, it's an important part of his game that he's bringing. Yeah, off the back of uh, goal kicking. Um, I'm just interested to know, would you rather show your porn search history to your mum or your wife? <laughs> Definitely my wife. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think mum. <laughs> Run me through that, Gibbs. 
<laughs> no, it's just something that I've been uh, thinking about, you know, for the last week. I, I saw one of the questions and it, it puzzled me all week, so I just thought I'd ask you. I'm always fascinated with your, your answers. <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> um, hey, Slips, we do a segment on this show. To explain it, that's the Cosmo questions. If you've been watching the show, we've got 200 Cosmo questions to ask. Um, and it's Gitz's his favourite thing. Um, so... Uh, there'll be a few of those throughout the uh, the course of the show. Hey, uh, we did a little segment on the show called our Superb Sizzlers, Super Sizzlers. Um, if you if you'll humour us here, uh, slips, we just go around and pick our performers from the weekend of the Superb Rugby. You happy to sit yep. through this? Yeah, great. All right, it's time now for this Super Sizzler, brought to you by Beef Eater. Life tastes better outdoors. Well, funnily enough, my uh, do you mind if I start this one? Yeah, guys? we'd love you to start. James Slipper. Yeah. Um, led from the front. Got it done there up in Queensland. He is my uh, super sizzler. Um, sorry, Drew, as we do this, uh, have you cooked something on yeah, the Beef Eater barbecue? I've whipped up a couple of superb sizzlers as well. Um, so we do have a Beef Eater that has replaced Goit in studio. Um, Drew has been doing some cooking on it. While uh, Drew's getting the sausages here, we'll just run through. Uh, yes, my super sizzler was uh, Slips. Do you have one there, Swoop? I do. It was tough. Right, it came down to two, two sizzles. Uh, Mark Taleo, who obviously got the hat trick on the weekend, Ooh, but you. I'm staying local and I'm going to double plug him. Darby Lancaster, debut for the Rebels. His defence was outstanding. He kept Marky Mark very quiet on the edge. Thanks, mate. I thought you were a wrist kind of guy anyway. Uh, kept Marky Mark very, very quiet. Um, try saving tackle, put himself in some pretty tough positions, got over the ball. I mean, we love that, you know, Aussie winger getting his head in the wrong, you know, in those dark places. Uh, Derby, mate, well done, mate. You're you're killing it. Bright, bright future. Has he got a barbecue? Um, I don't think he does. Darbs, you got a you got a beef eater? You want a beef eater? Slips, have you got a barbecue? I sure do. All right. Is it a beef eater? <laughs> Just say yes. Beef eater. Beef eater. He said. Beef eater. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Drew, uh, I'm going to go with the Hurricanes. They just they continue to sizzle. Mm. Um, I don't know. They're just they're just looking pretty pretty sharp at the moment. I like Naholo on the edge. I've, their back row is strong. Duplessis, um, Shields as well. I don't know. I just I think what they're doing at the moment is pretty complete and uh, it's going to take a pretty good performance to beat them. Do they have barbecues in Wellington? Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. And but they are. but they they're wind affected. So ones that aren't wind affected are beef eaters. Of course, mm. makes perfect sense. Uh, Goit, have you got a super sizzler? I do. And I want to touch on, you mentioned Slips, but Slips also tied uh, Stephen Moore for the most capped um, mm. Australian in Super Rugby history. Is wow. that right, Slips? The record. Yeah. Yeah, All Australian. Alone, all again. Yeah. So that's a little add-on to yours. But mine was Frank Lamani. He got 50 caps. I know, Slips, it's nothing for you. But <laughs> for, for Frank, I think it was pretty impressive. Um, and also, I love the way he was sizzling and ripping into Nick White throughout the game. Those two two boys going at each other, I think there's a boxing match that we could make happen. Oh. And Frank would absolutely murder him from what I saw. Him. <laughs> does but does... I'm not Whitey. I don't know. I don't know about that. Whitey, he's from Maitland. Oh, is he? Yeah. No, no, that's no. a pretty... Odds just came in. Yeah, a pretty Frank's, rough part. Frank's, Frank's DJ. <laughs> it's Frank, true. <laughs> now, you know the question I'm going to ask you, Goit. Hmm. Has he got one? <laughs> I'm sure he'd love another one. <laughs> Feet up, just feet. on that one though, like, what about the conditions? How Fiji good was that to watch? Yeah, the... like, at what point do you, do you consider maybe calling it or something? Like, never. I know, I know that. I remember I being like... a kid and playing in conditions yeah. like that, and just uh, who was the, the the winger for drill when they uh, fourteen? His name escapes me. Right, uh, T- uh, Talmunda. That's him, and he the runaway try, and he jumped from about ten meters out and just slid and mm. just yeah, very good. Mate, what? You would have absolutely hated that. No, no, no. So if it's a slight drizzle, I don't like it. But if it's really wet, I like it. Because once you're wet, then you're wet. You, you know? do like, like it really wet. Don't yeah, you? yeah. <laughs> like once I'm in it, then I don't mind it. But if it's just a bit of a drizzle, <laughs> if it's just no, but if it's a bit of a drizzle and it's just annoying to get down and stretch, like I'm like, fuck, I'm off that. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, but it's a little bit like when do you call it? It's like Tim Zoo's fight. Mm. You- or that blood just coming through, and I was like, please don't call it, please don't call it. He's probably wanting to call it. But as spectators, you don't want to call it off. I'm 100% behind you. Hey, Slips, would you have liked playing in those conditions? 
Oh, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd be as, probably as happy as Drew's quads, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> playing in playing those conditions. Do you Thank fear you. for your life if you like a scrum collapses and you like maybe drown in a puddle? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's it, it wouldn't be ideal. Um, funny enough, like the Brumbies haven't been over there yet, so um, we can nearly you can nearly bet we're we're going to be there next year. Yeah, I was well, say, yeah, I what happens if... when a scrum collapse? Sorry, Drew, but I want to know. You see forwards when a scrum collapse and their head just smacks into the floor. Like, what's going through your head there? Do you know where the ball is? Do you know what's going on? Like, oh, you know where? Yeah, you know where the ball is. It, um, hopefully, it's at the number eight's feet. But you get taught from a young age. Like, if the scrum goes down, you just got to face plant the the ground, like straight All on right. the nose, straight on the beak. Um, and that's probably the safest way to go about it. But, yeah, I guess as a prop, as an older prop, you always know where the ball is. <laughs> the further, further out the back, the better. <laughs> uh, it's a good time for me to say the um, Drua beat the force 31-13. I'm just trying to get through the scores as we go yeah, here. And they did it um, with a man down as well for yeah. a period of time as well. Yeah. They're, they're going to be tough to beat at home. Oh. I don't know if they... I don't know if they're going to get beaten at home this year. If they can, if they can go through. Oh, the mock! I know, I know. <laughs> I'm back. I know, but you know, if they can go through where they actually host home final, they're going to be a tough team to beat. You know, they just got to try and pick up a couple on the road because at home they're locked in. Absolutely. Hey, slips. Did you have a super sizzler before we say goodbye to this segment? Yeah, the sizzler for me was Charlie Kale. Mm. Um, yeah, he's good. I think, I think he's having a really good year and. Um, up against a pretty good back row at the Reds, I thought he he stood up really well. So he's he's one of those players who um, isn't known for the tough stuff, but what we saw the other night, he he got stuck in. So yeah, I'd, I'd say he's going really well. Oh, he he'd love to hear that slips. Yeah, he's paying me. <laughs> no, he'd love he to hear that he's not known for the tough stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey slips, what about the tool shed? We love the tool shed here. Can you give us a little bit of dirt on the tool shed? Luke Corey. Yeah, the tool shed. Oh, a bit of dirt. Mate, it was actually, there was a few photos going around the WhatsApp the other day. Here we go. Tooley, back in the heyday. Get your phone and, out. Uh, he, had oh, the, he had the I've full bleach chair. <laughs> um, no, he's, a, he's, he's a country lad. He's he's pretty quiet, but he's a little bit weird. He reminds me a bit about Drew when he was younger. <laughs> um, but he's he's got genuine jets. Oh, oh, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so this leads me to my next question. What was the last thing you lied about? Uh, my weight this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you after a big this? Easter? How's that sweet? What are you at now? Let's Do you want the up. true one or the, the one I said? Uh, well, I want to know what you started at when you first came in and then what you're at uh, now. Uh, so when I first came in, I was about... But that, that first Wallaby season, 2010, I started at 115 and ended at 120. Because oh, um, I, I kept getting pushed back to the buffet by um, Pardo. And uh, he kept making me eat. But I, right now, I sit at 115. Um, but, I, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say I'm on the lighter side of, of props running around these days. You know, you look at Nella and Alan and these sort of blokes, um, they're pushing up to 130 in Alan's case. Well, what did you lie about then? Like, what did you tell them today? I always try and add a few on. I'm one of those props who always try and sneak a couple more kilos on. Well, Gits used to weigh in with like a little, um, like a barbell plate. What? A little 1.25 cheeseburger. In his or, or, or he'd load up in the water beforehand so it was fully hydrated weight. Yeah, there's a little bit of GST there. I would drink the water. I wouldn't have a weight in my pants. No, a, little, a little 125. <laughs> I'm sure there was a time where... Little he hamburger, little flash. I went to go for a little grab, and I was like, well, "What's going on in there?" Circular. Yeah, no, that's not true. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, while we got slips, let's talk some wallabies. Slips. We're uh, pretty pumped about old Joe Schmidt coming in for for uh, for our national team. We've got a slogan here, as you know, Schmidt it in. Um, do you have this firm belief that we can Schmidt it in this year, mate? Oh, well, I think I think we've got the players. Um, you know, coming off a pretty hard year last year, it's it's you know it's no surprise that we've got some work to do. Um, that's just being honest. Um, but I, I deep down, I I think we got the cattle there to to really perform against the top teams. Um, 
you know, I think once Joe comes in and picks his team and puts a bit of detail around how we want to play the game and get us all aligned, I think um, the results will come quick. But, um, you know, there's plenty of work there to do. But I'm, I'm confident. Sounds you like talk about detail shirt. there, Slips. No, it just you touch on detail. That was the common, I suppose, complaint from a lot of the players when they were under Eddie. Have you seen the you seen the documentary? Have well, I, ha- seen- I haven't actually seen it. I've seen just snippets of it. Um, my wife made me watch the part she was in. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. she happy? Was she happy with it? Oh yeah, she was. Oh, it was mainly because our daughter was in it. So it was, um, you know, it was, it was cool for us, but. Um, you know, that first episode flashed up and I saw, you know, the start of uh, start of the documentary and how happy or how, you know, encouraged we were and pumped we were for the year ahead. And obviously knowing what happened, it, it was just, it was like watching a car crash really, so. You uh, were the main tough. character, Slips. You were very good in it. Yeah. Oh, there's a Logie yeah. nomination coming. <laughs> well, I've had a few, I've had a few comments, a few messages swing my way. Um it, look, it's something I've never done before. It's you know, it's normally these three blokes who were in the in the in the driving seat back in the day. So um a few of the props got to run this time. When Eddie was talking to you about the hardness, we've got no hardness. Mm. Were you confused? Because we were all a bit confused at home. Did you did you know what he oh, was saying? Oh, in context it was he was talking more about um you know, the I guess the amount of amount of games players get to play um and in particular australian players you know you look at the french boys and they uh, all these boys have played over in france you play a lot of rugby you know week in week out where super rugby is a little bit different and that's where eddie was coming from was um you know in that battle hard and sort of week to week got to keep going five games in a row sort of stuff so um yeah probably just implying that uh the australian players haven't been um, you know, exposed to that sort of rugby before. Or, was there any, or sorry, mate. Was there was there any moment through uh, the World Cup campaign or anything that kind of gave you a bit of a just an inkling that maybe Eddie wasn't going to stay long term? Because now, obviously, after the fact that Doco's come out and there was a time in the dressing rooms where he was addressing you boys. It might have been after the last game, and he said he was he was saying, "You blokes." You know, get your get your heads up. You blokes have the squad to win a 2027 World Cup. And to me, you know, like when I was listening to that, I thought that was really significant because at the time he was signed on to be here for the 2027 World Cup. And I would have thought he would have said, we have the squad to win the 2027 World Cup. But he said, you. Were there any little moments that sort of just like a little bit of a, I don't know, light bulb to say, hang on a minute, is this guy actually fully committed? Uh like yeah, I guess you got to take someone at face value. You know, mm. he kept telling us that he was going to be, you know, our coach. So, um, as a player, you believe that. Uh, but you know, where there's smoke, there's normally fire. That is pretty close behind it. Um, and you know, a couple of articles were were coming out um, before kickoffs, and and it was kind of lingering around. And then obviously the rumor mill started. And as you know, in rugby, the room, you know, the rumors gain a bit of traction over time so mm. um i wouldn't say there was any given moment that eddie was going to leave us but um yeah I, I did i did ever think that it was a real possibility speaking of smoke and fire slips how many how many games you now played 178 <laughs> seven 177 130 odd tests which means you've seen a few hotels in your time out of out of the the complimentary hotel items, hand soap, hand towel, and umbrella, which do you think you've used more? <laughs> and have you ever I'm used say, all three together? <laughs> I'm going to say with you, Swoop, in particular, I've used the umbrella the most. <laughs> Talk us through it. I oh, know we're just well prepared. You know, players that like to go out of the hotel with an umbrella just in case it rains. Mm. Mm. Makes perfect sense. Hey, Slips, we've uh, kept you a long time here. A uh, little thing we like to try with our guests just to finish. It's called um, the Type 5. It's just five real quick questions. Um, you can reel off some answers. Are you happy to do that just to finish? Sure. All right, Let's go. Here we go. 
Uh, Michael Hooper, James Slipper, Will Skelton, David Parecki, Alan Alatoa, and Tate McDermott all captained the Wallabies in 2023. Let me ask you, who gave the best pre-match speech? Uh, Michael Hooper. Mm, makes sense. What's scarier, packing down for a scrum five out from your line against the All Blacks or catching the ball in space with an open try line? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say the scrum. <laughs> <laughs> um, will you be sending Eddie Jones a Christmas card this year? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Ireland v South Africa. Who is the best team in the world right now? Uh, South Africa. We'll find out, won't we? And if you could be any position on the rugby field, what would it be? Uh, I'm going to say number eight. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Could we see you play there maybe just before you, you hang them up? No, uh, it wouldn't. Mate, it won't be at super ugly. Maybe fourth division in club footy. <laughs> as long as I can play with career savers on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what uh, What are your plans, Slips? Like, how long are we going to be able to enjoy you out there on the field and and uh, and soak it up? Uh, well, at this stage, I'm signed to the the lines. Um, so June, June, July next year, um, and after that, I'm not too sure. To be fair. Um, you know whether I get to play the Lions as a Wallaby or a Brumby, I'm not. I don't, I don't know, but uh, that'd be pretty special to potentially finish there. Would um, you Would you go overseas, or would you go back to a club at like you know once it's all sort of wound up here in Oz? Um, well, I'd I'd, I'd definitely say I'd be done internationally at, from the Lions um, up until the Lions, sorry, and then you know whether I play Super again or or um, get down to Balmain or something. <laughs> uh, that'd be good. Hey, Slips, thanks so much for joining us. Um, you guys have got the Waratahs next week. We uh, we won't be able to watch live, but we will be in Hong Kong and we'll be able to watch on NordVPN. Yes. You can... <laughs> nice, bro. Thank you, mate. Well, that's Ollie that's tipped me into that, but you can change your, uh, what is it, your IP address and we can, we'll be watching you. Don't worry, Slips. I uh, appreciate it. Go well against those Tars. Thanks for your time, Big Sex. Cheers, Stivo. Appreciate yeah. you, mate. Hey, hey. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right. Hey, look, it is. this is the prop show. This is yeah. the prop pod, and we uh, make our way from a Wallaby prop onto an English prop. Uh, now, Joe, I'm assuming you are listening, but the way that it works on this show, I don't know how much of you've seen it, is Tommy writes an intro. So if you can stand by, Joe, I will read this to you to bring you in. Here we oh, go. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> our guest this week on the Coco Show, is another man that oozes big boy energy. He has played over 200 games for the Harlequins and over 90 caps for England. This inked-up enigma has made a career of crawling under opponent's skin, so much so that his on-field antics have their own YouTube channel. In a sport built on physicality and intensity, this bloke brings a human element to every game, a lightness and an irreverence that sends rugby to another level. He is truly the loosest loose head in the business, the Eastbourne Earthquake and the Sultan of Sussex. So, pod save the king and God save this pod. It is time for Mr. Joe Marla. Hey. hey. Oh, mate. Good finish, Paul. Great finish. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank didn't you. know where that was going, but then you get you hit me with the Sultan of Sussex and I went, yeah, fucking too right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, can we start with where you are right now for those watching this? Where, where are you located? Uh, I'm in my car. And I'm about five minutes down the road from the house at a garage. It's a Shell garage. Do you want the sponsorship from Shell? We'd love, yeah. we'd love we sponsorship. Yeah. some sponsorship. Yeah. So it's a lovely Shell garage, and they've got fucking great signal um, that I don't have at my house, so I have to drive up here <laughs> if I'm never invited on people's podcasts. Well, why don't you have signal sucking, at your house? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, you're sucking Wi-Fi off Shell. Yeah. Well, fuck them. It's about time they gave back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I agree. I'm all about the people. Hey, Joe, let's start with uh, let's start with your win over Bath. You guys, you got it done eventually. Oh, the, at the at the weekend. Yes, it's less than twenty four hours ago, isn't it? Oh fucking hell yeah! Um, what was it? Oh yeah, we beat him. We. Uh, 40 points to 36. Here we go. It's a rugby show. Let's fucking get into it. Yeah. So you were up 40 points to three. And as yeah. far as I understand it, all points were scored at one end. So a bunch of people that came to the game didn't see any points scored. And they, they came back in the second half. 
What happened? I actually wasn't on until we started getting licked out. <laughs> I mean, can I say licked out now? Um, so maybe I contributed to that, but then uh, we we managed to hold on. It's just about. Well, some may say that we cheated by uh, by chucking our yellow card back on three and a half minutes yeah, early. I saw that. There's a bit well, of chat I on think, Twitter about uh, that. Three and a half yeah, minutes. I think a little bit. That's decent. I don't. I have no fucking idea how that's happened. <laughs> how the fuck has the Who's your manager? Your on? manager's got a dodgy watch. <laughs> it's not our manager, mate. It's got nothing to do with the club. It's the fourth oh, official right. of the league. They determine. Oh, you're going back on at seventy minutes or whatever. So he's obviously looked at his watch and gone, yeah, you can go back on now. I think that's the, t- the time. I, think I reckon he's had a massive lick on you boys to win. Like he's <laughs> had a big bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his arsehole started like puckering up. Like the thought of us <laughs> losing that 40, that 40 point lead. He's just oh, like, oh, fuck it. Get someone back on quick. <laughs> Joe, I want to quickly talk about a bet that you and Drew had mm. last year. Do you remember? Uh, can you, Drew? Can yeah. you walk us through this, you and Joe? Yeah, it was. I think it was during the autumn internationals up there in the northern hemisphere, and um, I don't know. I think I was responding to something Joe tweeted. I think there it is on the screen. And basically, it was just a, a bet between uh, the Wallabies and the English. Uh, whoever lost had to sing the opposing team's anthem in maybe a pair of budgie smugglers, and of course, the Wallabies lost. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'll do it properly. I put the English jersey on. By G's went down to the opera house and uh We've got a bit of it here it just before we talk to Joe about it. Just roll a touch in here, just so Joe can hear it. I was so awkward here. God save our gracious queen. Long live <laughs> our noble queen. God save the queen. Basically, Drew wearing a pair of budgie smugglers, he's got an English jersey on, he's at the opera house. He's at the. Uh, he's also at the Harbour Bridge, and he's singing "God Save the Queen." Did you see it, Joe? Once he did it. Yeah, that was. Yeah, of course I fucking did. If you're making a bet, you're following up on it, and you're going, "You are fucking doing that." Because I'd have done the same. I'd have done exactly the same. I'd have walked up the shell garage <laughs> in my budgie smugglers, <laughs> in front of about four people, singing "Waltzing Fucking Matilda," with a picture of the beef on my chest. That's what I'd have done. Do you but, know the um, word? Uh, uh, Waltz in Matilda, Waltz in Matilda, you come a Waltz in Matilda with me. That's all right. That's good enough. Yeah, I'm happy. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know the words? Uh, no, I know up to the same point. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> So you're very good on Twitter. You're very entertaining for us down here. Can I bring up one of my favourites just real quick? Um, it was you chatting to Andy Good. Here we go. So Andy Good wrote, Joe Marler showing a lack of respect for Bill Beaumont and walking straight past without shaking his hand sums him up really. And Joe wrote, eat shit, wank bucket, let's catch up soon. <laughs> Kiss. <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> mate, those are good areas. That's, that's why you're very popular down here, mate. Oh, wait, bucket. That's the best. <laughs> oh, i just done enough at that point. I went, oh, I can't have it for you, mate. You're fucking... <laughs> um, you're... Oh, you're horrible. Just horrible. <laughs> I, like, I like what you lot are doing here. I like what you're doing. Your strategy is let's stoke the fire a bit f- fucking harder <laughs> and then uh, set some sort of shit storm going. And there's traction from Coco's and uh, fuck off. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. <laughs> okay. What, 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 what I want to know, which is something you, you're very uh, open about, is OnlyFans. You, uh, I recently found out that you show your feet um, and different things that you do with your feet. So, one, uh, how do you get into it? And two, how, how's it working for you? Is it is it popular? You know when you do stuff and then... You forget you've done it, <laughs> but then you don't, because you've already done it. It's already out there. You can't then stop stop it from being out there. That's one of those things that oh, you go, fucking hell, I forgot about that one. 
Um, it was just a bit of a. We had some. Um, we had a sex worker on our podcast, on my podcast, and and then we also had a foot health specialist. It's quite a mixed podcast, actually. Um, <laughs> and they both really liked my feet. And I said, yeah, well, I see my feet as one of my best features. And they were like, yeah, we do too. And I went, um, is that a compliment? <laughs> uh, someone's got good feet. Like, it's kind of the lowest thing. But I went, fuck it. Let's put it on OnlyFans. Let's try and get some traction. Just like what you lot were trying to do there. Mm. You know, that PR stunt you're trying to... <laughs> get me involved in um and then it sort of took off a bit more because someone someone some people were going mate we'll pay you 150 quid if you show us one of you taking your sock off and i went <laughs> hang on a minute but now i know 150 quid doesn't seem a lot of money to you fuckers but hey, you, had, you had two of those at 300 <laughs> yeah thanks for that <laughs> No, I'm glad you cleared that one up because I was really trying to work that one out. What would happen if I did that twice? That was three times. What would it be? I'm not. I've only got two feet. <laughs> anyway, it was just a bit of fun to pick up some publicity, and then people started asking me weird shit like trending in cow pats. Oh, um, and I'm all for that because it's only a bit of feet. But my missus sort of was like, this is getting a bit weird and creepy. If you're starting at feet, where's, where does it stop? And I went, well, well, it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? We could be millionaires if you want, Dace. Let's fucking crack on. Let's get the cameras out full stop. And she's like, just stop. Just stop what you're doing. This is fucking weird. Well, this is different to those <clears throat> tactics you just pulled us up on. But I saw a tweet late last week about um, Tabai Matson getting... Uh, you know, I guess sent on his way from from the Harlequins and some nice things about uh, he's leaving the club and a decent bloke and what he's done for the club and supporters he'll be missed and all that type of thing. And you wrote back, subjective. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? True. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. True. <laughs> well, everything is subjective, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Mind you, it, like we live in a world that even the objective things are subjective. You go, oh, how much did you lift today? Oh, I did 150 kegs. Uh, didn't look like it. I said, but it it was. There's 150 kegs on the bar. Mm, subjective, isn't it? They're like, no, no, it's literally objective. That is the weight you lifted. Like it's factually correct. I went, well, it's in your opinion. <laughs> so, Drew, my answer to that question is. I wish Tabai all the very best. <laughs> Love it. Hey, can you tell us about your podcast, Joe, for all these people down under uh, that want to listen to it? Joe Marler's Things People Do. Who have you had on it? Yeah, just loads of people. We just get random people on that ask, and we ask them about their story or their jobs that they do. We get like, no, now I'm going to say it out loud. I'm meant to be selling it. Why am I <laughs> selling it? Why am I selling it to you fuckers? No. You don't care. Can, don't you want Australians <laughs> to listen? Australia? Yeah. Fucking Australians. Fucking, if they want to fucking listen, they're not going to fucking listen, mate. They don't want that pommy <laughs> in their ears, do they? <laughs> <laughs> you do know us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we How are you lot? I want to know what how you lot are. I, don't, I, can't, I fucking love watching you lot. You lot fucking make me die. Some of the clips that come out of you lot, you're all piss heads and off your trolleys and uh i just really enjoy it well there could be a chance next year get on that lions tour and we could uh have a good old <laughs> good old sesh together not a hope in fucking hell i'll be on that tour but i'll definitely consider it a lot of commercial opportunities <laughs> <laughs> well either or just get yourself down here well the other one's a spring uh, tour we're thinking of coming over there in november will you be playing oh, yeah against the wallabies then is that who England are playing? Yeah, Probably. we're playing all four. We, I think we're doing the England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, the Grand Slam Tour. Fuck, mate. <laughs> Fuck. Um, will I be playing? I don't know. I don't pick the team, do I? I'm available, but um, that's very much out of my hands. 
I can't retire again because I've retired 300 times. And mm. if I did it again, they wouldn't believe me anyway. So <laughs> fuck it. I'll just walk off into the night, never to be seen again. Um, who knows? Yeah, I'd like to catch up with you lot. Maybe get you lot on my podcast. We do have to ask some rugby questions here. Yeah, crack on. All right. It has to be about Beaver. Oh, yeah. Eddie Jones. <laughs> I knew it. Can you, mate, why didn't you warn us? You lot are fucking loving the appointment at the start. You were buzzing. <laughs> that episode you lot did, and you all sat, sat in the line like little schoolboys, like, oh, God, we're here with the beaver again. Um, <laughs> and then I have no idea what happened. The catastrophe fuck that ended up in the World Cup with him. Uh, we was just sacking boys left, right, and centre. Like, not just boys either, like your, your biggest players. He was like, He'd gone full beef, just didn't give a fuck about a thing. Um, I'd, I'd quite like an insight from you guys. That uh, are you genuinely upset about how that ended up with him? <laughs> Did you not see Drew during the World Cup, Joe, <laughs> when he went on his little Wales rant? I was Fiji. Um, sorry. Just, just give me a little uh, debrief of that, please, Drew. No, I uh, I probably had a couple of hours sleep. Woke up to a warm bottle of rosé and. I think at that point the hope had run out, and uh, and I kind of just spoke um, emotionally slash intoxicatedly. <laughs> um, but it was also off the back of you'd you'd thrown off a couple of heavy tweets, pretty blind, as the game was happening because you were in France. I don't think we were there yet, so we woke up with this whole lot of texts where you were. No, you they know, weren't tweets. I'll text. Yeah. Or a text, yeah. After the text where you were obviously upset with what was going on. Mm. So we kind of did what we tried to do with you, Joe, and egg, egg you on trying to get something for us. But see, Drew delivered. You haven't. I, I took the bait. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't delivered because I'm still in contract at the club and I've still got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you want to speak again in a year's time, if you're still going, maybe we can... If we're still going. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I didn't mean I didn't mean the podcast. I meant like your livers or something. <laughs> oh mate, we're off to to Hong Kong this week, so they they may very well stop on us this weekend. The sevens is that on now? Is it? Yeah. Um, um, what about England at the moment? And this, I mean, you the public were slightly against you, and then you got did quite well in that Six Nations. Mm. You got your Ruined Ireland's party, stopped the Grand Slam. Um, how's, how's the vibe in English rugby at the moment? English rugby? Um, oh, yeah. it's. I guess the vibe's all right. It's better than what it was, but you've still got to look at the face of it and go, we won three games out of five in the Six Nations. So, like, the last two games were big performances and definitely improved performances. But we lost against France away. You know, a couple of dubious calls. Um, but, uh, you know, so there's still plenty of disappointment within the camp of, well, actually, we won three out of five games. Uh, we didn't play particularly well at the start of it. It took us a while to get going. And then we were a shit show against Scotland. Um, Scotland were good, but fucking hell, we were dross. Um, and then to have a reaction against Ireland and then a decent performance against France. It's all well and good, but you don't want to be that team that's just always reacting to, to mm. getting pumped or playing shit. Um, there's definitely progress being made there. There's still a load of youngsters in the squad. Fucking hell, there's a lot of youngsters. Oh, my God. Um, the, a few of us are trying to guide and navigate. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly <laughs> kept a straight face for that. No fuckers listening to me, are they? Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, it's, it's good. Steve's, Steve's got a good thing going. Um, Jamie George is fucking unbelievable captain, unbelievable bloke. Um, and he's settling in nicely in that role. Um, different sort of role to what Faz provided. Faz was fucking unbelievable. You boys know Faz. He's mm. like, an unbelievable competitor and He's like, right, this is my way, fucking follow me. Um, great captain, but Jamie's a different one in, in the sense of he's a bit more of a social chameleon. 
but like in a positive way. Sometimes people say someone's a social chameleon. They're like, I don't know, a bit wet. I don't mean that at all. And obviously England Did going I? down to New Zealand next year, first time in a long time. Can England oh, be? Oh fuck! No, they're playing it. They're playing Japan first. Of course, apologies via Japan, so you guys will get to say good day to Eddie for us, which is great. The beef, I heard he was trying to get kickoff at like eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, like really? midday. Why? He was like, "Let's fuck it," because he wanted to cook, cook the fuckers. Let the, <laughs> let the fuckers cook. <laughs> yeah, see how they fucking see how they fucking handle the heat. Go and fucking handle it, can they? <laughs> but we've managed to get that push back, which is nice. I'm looking forward to just whether I'm involved or not. I'm just looking forward to the the media bombs that are going to come flying out from Eddie in that week leading up to England, Japan, because he just won't be able to help himself, will he? With his mm. former understudy, Steve, and very different blokes, very different characters. I'm intrigued to see how that week goes. And then fucking hell, yeah, the All Blacks. Why do why do you lot just not call your team by your names, by your country names? Why do you lot insist on All Blacks and fucking Wallabies and Springboks? Why can't you just say your actual countries? Well, because we've got a few different sports here, unlike England. You're good at one thing. <laughs> all good. But we've got a lot of different sports we're good at. So we've got to go kangaroos, wallabies, soccerroos, you know. Is my understanding? No, that that's a bollocks answer because you just go, you just go Australia Rugby Union. Yeah, but then you got league. You get confused. I'm already confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just a... think you lot, you lot are all entitled. Like, oh, you got to call us by these nicknames because we're so much better at the sport that you fuckers you can't invented. Say we're entitled with your accent. Your the English accent for me does <laughs> my head in. Like you come into a room, hello, how are you? So who does this bloke think he is? Sorry, <laughs> is that how I came into this room, was it? I went, oh, hello, how are you? <laughs> normally, normally, yeah. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Helmets. Um, it was like, someone asked me. Going. What? I was just saying the other blokes, they suddenly gone mute. They're not saying a word. No, we're just sitting oh, back and enjoying the show. The yeah. you two need to do a podcast. I think we've worked out who should come on your show, Joe. I think it's Gitz. Yeah, I've got him. <laughs> Fucking got him. Really, man. Why is he sitting in a sauna? What's going on here? You question me sitting in a car. He's sitting in a fucking toilet slash sauna. Yeah. Well, it's actually two in one. There's a hole in the middle. <laughs> got him for a. Why steal. are you in the studio with the boys? Easter, Easter Monday, uh, I had to spend it with the family and I couldn't get up there. They're Did in he, Sydney. They're, yeah, they're he lives three hours away. With those, those three fellas, they're the big smoke. They're like, if you're downtown, like you're in the city of, of England, that's these fellas. I'm out country. Yeah, well, you never boy. struck me as a country bumpkin. Are you a country boy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's never done a, an hour's hard labour, let alone a, a farmer of any any type. Don't wink at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it fucking weirds me out, mate. I wish yeah. I, I wish I was Australian. I wish I was Australian. Fucking hell, mate. Yeah, fucking shit. <laughs> you can say shit <laughs> without getting in trouble. Like, yeah. I well, don't know. You lot just... It's a term of endearment here. So I, I say that to my nan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hey, <laughs> mate. We, hey, why don't you just come down to my nan? Why hey, shit. Just... <laughs> <laughs> want a cup of tea, shit? <laughs> He's spot on. <laughs> We're very close, Joe. We're very close. <laughs> hey, um, Joe, you can become an Australian if you want. A very easy uh, system. It just doesn't take that long. Come down. We'll give you a passport. Um, you can probably pack into the front row for us for about ten years. Um, we'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest. Hey, um, what we like to do on this show, as you've seen, I know you're a big fan, Joe. We like to finish with a quiz, and we like to make it all about our guest. Yep, hit me. Beautiful. So what happens is the three boys compete, then you reveal the answer, and then hopefully there is a, a wonderful anecdote that follows, and um, we all make podcast gold together. All right, 
Here we go. First question, gentlemen. You know how it works. I'll go around the room and uh, you can each take a stab at what the answer is uh, and we'll go from there. Question number one in the Joe Marler quiz. You can see I'm stalling here because I can't find the page. Here we go. On the field, Joe Marler has been called several names by opposing players, some of which can't be repeated here. However, those that played with him gave him the nickname Croissant. Why does Joe have the nickname Croissant? Is it A, because he is flaky and can't commit? Is it B, because he looks like he eats croissants? Is it C, because his nose is shaped like a croissant? Or is it D, what, ne- what lies between his legs is shaped like a croissant? <laughs> All right, Drew. Uh, that's a tough one. C. C. D. D. Gets. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a croissant one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer here? Right, right hang on a minute. Like, out of all of them, you think I've got a dick like a croissant? <laughs> yeah. That's what I said, D. <laughs> you think I've got a flaky dick? <laughs> oh, the shape. It must curl back to you. If you go left to right, it must curl back to your right from your left. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you listening, Joe is just taking a quick look outside the Shell petrol station. Just <laughs> first thing in the morning, people going to the gym. Uh, no, it is not my dick shaped like a croissant. It's because my nose is shaped like a croissant. But I did like the uh, the alternatives actually. Yeah. <laughs> ding ding ding! Drew one, one up. other two zip. Okay, question number two on the UK TV show. You got a picture here for us, Tommy? Uh, Queens for the night. Joe Marler transformed into a drag alter ego. What was the name of his drag character? We've got the photo there. <laughs> so if you're listening, make sure you tune in and have a look at this one. Is it A, Trixie Turnover? B, Poppy the Pretty Prop? C, Jasmine the Jackal? D, Ruby Ruckalot? Swoop. What was the first one? Oh, Trixie right. Turnover. A. I like Trixie. <laughs> Gits. Oh, I like Trixie too. Either that or... Yeah, I'm going to go Trixie. A. I'm going with Poppy. Poppy, the answer, Joe... Uh, the answer is Trixie Turnover. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Jeez, Have you lot done drag? You lot, yeah, you plenty of times. We love drag. drag. Gits did drag last week at our 40th. What did you go as? Don't say a woman. I went as Julia Roberts, pretty woman, when Beautiful. she was the... She Lady was of the night. Yeah. What was the theme of the, the party? What you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right, eh? Very good question. Number three, Joe Marla is a very popular marketing tool for brands. Which one of these brands has Joe not done work for? Is mm-hmm. it A, Durex Condoms, B, McDonald's, C, Beef Eater, Great Barbecues, D, Jolly Hog Sausages. So we want to find the one that he hasn't done work for. Um, really well gets- played on this one. Really well played. Thank, Ooh, thank you, man. Great angle on this question. Yeah. Fucking well played. Thank <laughs> you. Get Beef eater. Beef, beef eater. eater. Where he's heading. Beef eater. What thank you. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to go beef eater, yeah, but I'm maybe he could in the future. Have you got a barbecue, Joe? What the fuck is beef eater? It's a barbecue down here. It's a wonderful. Have you got one? What, a barbecue? Yeah, beef eater barbecue. Hang on, sir. I'll give you a better answer then. Oh, I like the sound of those barbies. <laughs> oh, I'd love one. They look like a world class barbecue that. Would fit nicely in my house. Oh, toasty. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Perfect. Hugo, in the edit, we'll go for the second take. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Question number four. In 2018, oh, what Club... what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm sitting in a car at a fucking shell garage at half seven on Easter Monday talking to you c- what am i doing you are you know what you're doing you are flying mate you are thriving this is it this is your big moment question number four in a 2018 club rugby match what did joe marla do to james haskell to get a reaction that would ultimately lead to haskell's sin bidding was it a grab him below the belt b squirt water in his face c pull his hair d Marla said I'm a better DJ than you. I'm pretty sure it's B, Squirt Water. Squirt. Gits? Yeah, we're squirting. Oh, jeez. Joe, Joe's a squirter. Joe, are you a squirter? 
Yeah, straight squirt, lads. Straight squirt, <laughs> lads. He was fucking getting it. I was, he'd been out for so long. He'd been injured and he was frothing at the mouth to get on the pitch. And then you could see it look, giving it the big I am. And he can't give it the big I am like that because he, he's actually that entitled guy that you spoke about <laughs> earlier gets it. Here, Leo, yeah, I'm here. Everybody in the place, put your hands in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Face about to drop. And he was frothing out the mouth, ready to fucking go. And I went, right, this fucker's getting it. I think and, he's. Uh, we were at the bot. We were at the bottom of a ruck, and he had this scrum out on, and I started choking him with the scrum out, like. <laughs> and then I ripped it, and then I managed to tuck it under my shirt and hide it, and it all like sort of kicked off, and I like hid, ran and hid like the coward that I am, and I ch I chucked it over our side, you know, and like someone loses a boot or something, you chuck it over your side and make him have to come and get it. And so he had to come, he had to then walk past us to come and get it. And as he's done that, I've just splashed him with a bit of water. And the fucking reaction, I, I knew I'd get him, but I didn't know I'd get him like that. <laughs> and just venom and the rage in his face to then grab me and put, him his, put, him, put me in his famous Vulcan death grip. Hey, bloody hell, old chap. What the bloody hell are you doing? You've squirted water in my face. I'm now going to engage in a in a little bit of aggression towards you by maybe choking you out with my hand on the floor and I'm fucking dying. Like, I'm being choked, but I'm also dying with pure joy and happiness <laughs> of winding that fucker up. And then it's more the reaction when the ref is going, well, I'm sorry, James, what you've done. He's, he's choked me with a scrub hat and then he's squirted water in my face. Review the decision. You're not allowed to do that. Sorry, James, it's a yellow card for you. And off he trots. And I was just like, oh, this is fucking brilliant. <laughs> I, don't, I don't play rugby because uh, I'm any good at rugby. I'm not very good at rugby. Um bang average but i tell you what i'm fucking world class at making other people shit here <laughs> <laughs> and that was just a really good moment for me so, did, did he shake your hand some... after the game uh yes yeah, he came up for a cuddle after like, <laughs> yo yo you bastard one nil eh? one nil you oh jolly good <laughs> well he's djing in hong kong this weekend so we might go catch a set um, Squirt when, a bit of water at him. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good shout. <laughs> when he's dropping his bangers, that's a good shout. Please just go there and just start squirting him. <laughs> fucking great. Very good. All right, last question. I don't know the score. doesn't really We're matter. We're all together. Congratulations. Joe Marla <laughs> and his family are big animal lovers. As well as dogs, what animal did Joe own a pair of? Was it A, Shetland ponies, B, hairless sphinx cats, C, two ducks, or D, teacup pigs? Gits? Oh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Um, what was A again? Shetland ponies. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the ponies. So I might run with the ducks. The ducks? I'm going to go the teacup piglets. Joe, the answer <laughs> and ultimately revealing the winner. Uh, what, what was the question? Do you think we've got ducks? Do you have two ducks? No, nah, they're dead. But, <laughs> but at, at one stage, you did have a pair of ducks. Yeah, we had a pair of ducks, um, but they died. <laughs> Did you have ponies? Uh, no, no ponies, because uh, Daisy was worried that they'd die too. <laughs> Very good. That means uh, technically, ding, 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 congratulations, Adam Ashley well Cooper. Done, well done, Steve. Yeah, nice, bro. Thank you. Well, well done. Adam, congratulations. I'm going to send you a subscription to your feet. You want free subscription to Jose Mala Trotters? It'd mean a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jose Mala Trotters is coming your Just way. Just 30 days. Brother. That's all I'm asking. Oh, okay. How do you know about the terms and conditions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about that fine print. <laughs> Joe, thank you so no, much. Can I go now? You can go. Well, Joe, we're just going to say thanks. So thank you. Do you want to just give your podcast one more amazing plug like you did before? Uh, let's get into the mode. <coughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so I do... <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. 
Can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, I do. I do a podcast. Oh, God, what's happened to me? Turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah, so I do a podcast called Things People Do, and it's all about the things that people do. <laughs> you know, from from interviewing Tim Peake, the astronaut, about what it's like going into space. I mean, did you even go into space? Because is it even a real thing? Asking an astronaut that and seeing a reaction like that, it doesn't go down very well. Um, no one landed on the moon. He goes, you're a fucking moron. Why have you brought me on your podcast to ask me that? And I went, just because it's fun. Or you could get like a chimney sweep. We had Josh the chimney sweep on last week and he was in my top three favourite guests. Um, or we had... Um, who the fuck else have we had? Oh, the, the Newsnight producer who did the Prince Andrew scoop, oh, you know, when one. he really Ooh. fucking put his foot in it yeah. about all the shit that he's been up to, the fucking helmet. <laughs> um, uh, things people do. <laughs> <laughs> where, get, get it from wherever you get your podcast from. I just love talking to people. Everyone's got a story if you ask the right questions and... I fucking love doing it. It's great fun. Thank Joe, you just, very much for the opportunity to plug it. You're welcome, mate. Just quickly on space, who do you think was the first to walk on the moon? Was it was it Neil Armstrong or yeah. Buzz Aldrin, well, or was it the guy who was the cameraman? Or did no one actually get on the like? From what I'm picking up, maybe no one actually has been on the moon. The camera was mounted to the side of the shuttle. Was it though? Did you get into this, Joe? This might be a great tease for your podcast. This and much I, more. Uh, this and much more. How the fuck has the president rung the moon on a landline? <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a clip of whoever the president was at the time. Was it Nixon or something? Some fucking bloke like that. And he's ringing it. He just picks up this like... Ding. Oh, is that the moon? Yeah. <laughs> Can I speak to whoever's on it at the minute? Okay. <laughs> Oh, what's my American accent? Yeah, hey man. Congratulations, congratulations on landing on the moon. Uh, it's bollocks. It's fucking bollocks. <laughs> oh, and hate. saying that sort of stuff to an actual astronaut is, um, well, you'll have to check out things people do to find out what happened. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they, Good they, tease. It's a bit spiky. Nice. Nice. This is why you're <laughs> on the big bucks. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you for making the effort, getting in your car, freaking people outside Did you get, the shell. You, you got, you got, you'll be able to use some of that, will you? Yeah. All of it, Joe. All of it. Oh, good. Thank you, Joe. No, thank you, guys. I wish you all the best. I love listening to you. Like You're fucking great. You do your own thing. Love it. Keep on trucking. Bye. Fuck Bye. You, <laughs> I think he's in our gang, just yeah. quietly. He's yeah. one of us. Yeah. Gets thoughts? Yeah, I actually don't want him to get picked for the Lions. I think he could be great for us. <laughs> well, that's a good shout. He could do the live join, shows with join us. Join the team down here, yeah? Oh, Gits, you're always thinking ahead, mate. But he did and say he was chasing... Like Cook. Mac, get Mac cut as well. Yeah. We could have... Well, you know who's good at, you know, ruining, you know, jinxing Mac is Drew. Well, we could just leak something. <laughs> <laughs> good shout. But, hey... Something I didn't get to just before we got to slips was the rest of the superb rugby scores. Mm -hmm. People, they tune in for them. I told you, they wait till Tuesday. Tell us, Prof. Uh, so we did Crusaders 37, Chiefs 26, Rebels 27, Waratahs 21, Drua 31, Force 13. We went through that. Blues 47, Moana 8. Blues, uh, they just keep on rolling. Mm. Uh, anybody got one quick comment on the Blues? It's just the... Bloody good. They are bloody good. Hurricanes 47, defeated the Highlanders 12. Um, yeah, they were my super sizzle, the Hurricanes. They're going to be tough. I'll go deep. Maybe that's, so deep to the top, all the way to the end. That's deep. Are they, that's deep. I mean, we are six rounds in, seven rounds, eight rounds. Six rounds in, are, they, are you now saying <laughs> they could win? Ah, it's a bit early for that, Prof. <laughs> I don't know. Can you give me the weeks? Well, they I'm could win. This? Hey? They could win. That's yeah. not a bold statement. That they They're going to win? win. Going to win is a bold statement. That's okay. bold, yeah. We don't want to do that sort of stuff here. Um, Hurricanes, no, nope, just did that. So, and obviously the Brumbies, they beat the Reds uh, 20 to 19. And also the Superb W, yes. the Build Corp Superb Super Rugby W. Uh, Waratahs ladies got it done over the Rebels 38-17. Arabella McKenzie is 
outstanding at she the moment. She can play. Yeah, she, she can, can play. play. Uh, the Fijian and Drua ladies beat the Western Force and the Brumbies got up 31-14 over the Reds. So it looked pr pretty uh, promising for Joe Yap, the, the incoming Wallaroos coach, to select from uh, you know some, some players that are in some good form. Telling you. Yeah, that's a big win for the Brumbies too. Mm. The Brumbies ladies, because the Reds girls, they're... You know they're they're pushing for the title, and I thought the you know the Brumbies uh, Super W team had been struggling to find some form, so that was a big win for them. Superb rugby all round, rugby union in Australia on the up, absolutely flying. Hey, speaking of flying, we fly to Hong Kong tomorrow uh, um, on Cathay Pacific. That's exciting. We're pumped to have them on board as partners. Yep. Uh, and we've got an amazing... We're up the front, aren't we? We are. We get to turn left. We're this is left. only this is the second time I'll have ever been in business. Are you going to stay awake the whole flight? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are the movies the same up there? Um, I'm putting myself to sleep. <laughs> what do you mean? you got a dart in your neck. <laughs> <laughs> during the day? Oh, during, mate, really? Long flight, flat. You don't miss an opportunity. So okay. we'll, we'll rip in. Yeah, we'll, yeah we'll we've be done fine. that before. Yeah, we have. Have. And I'm yeah, also a bit worried about the old voicey box for the live show on the Sunday. Oh, yeah, of course. I don't reckon that flight's going to be your determining factor. Okay, so you reckon I <laughs> you reckon I push the boat out a bit on the flight then? Well, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. It's more that Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I want to see Karate Chop, chop Drew. I want to yeah. see him. Well, I might go back down to economy class and Karate Chop Tommy yes. Eskis. Suck it, Tommy. We might have to do some form on that flight because aren't we straight into the Sha Tin races on that? Mm. We are. So great itinerary. So Sha Tin races were out there on the Wednesday night. Um, and do so Swoop asked me, he goes, what's Shatin? <laughs> what's Shatin? And I was like, no, mate, it's Shatin. It's a race day. Don't worry, you'll be right. Now, now it's wear something nice. Yeah. Oh, do we have to wear something nice? Ollie, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up from Ollie. I'll have to go buy something. That's a shame. Um, we've got the Hong Kong Tourism Board. <laughs> They've put together this amazing itinerary. Let me run through it for you. If you are thinking to go to Hong Kong, do this exact trip. Shatin races on the Wednesday night. Shatin. Then... On the Thursday, a junk boat tour, fancy dress shopping. Wow. You two love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, then we're going to be eating local delicacies. Oof. And much, much more they've got here, which I guess is the stuff you can't say on podcasts. That's awesome. Great. <laughs> uh, remember, if you want to stay where we are staying, then book it into Ovolo Southside. Are we telling people where we're staying? Is this? Mm. Yeah, just not the room number. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, we are doing some drinks there on the Thursday night, uh, and the link is in the description. If you'd like to attend and meet the boys from Coco, we would love to meet you. Just a reminder. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Goit, on you go. Your itinerary, you had that fancy dress shopping on the Thursday. That's Friday when I get in. I'm a part of that. <laughs> That's something kids won't miss. Okay, mate. Yes, we, it is the Friday. My apologies, and you are included. Is Vivian getting another run, or you got something different for us? Uh, you never get the same thing, son. You got to change it up. No, I like that. Very good. Um, okay, yes. Uh, can't wait to go to Hong Kong and let's hope we all survive. Just a reminder where you can find us uh, Kickoffs, Kick Ons on everything except for YouTube. Uh, it is at Kickoffs and Kick Ons on YouTube. It's absolutely flying there. Tell your friends, tell your family, follow us um, and give us a rocket ship to the moon. I think that is all we've got there, gents. That's one, that was one hell of an episode. That was a great Easter Monday. And Gitz, you were saying props, they've all got, like, they're all a bit weird in the head, but I think they're fine. You want to say that? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Um, all right, that was Coco. Next week we are coming to you from Hong Kong. Make sure you tune in for that. Um, there is a, well, there's a very special guest that I think you've lined up. Swoop, is it locked in? Mm, we'll see. Okay. Rhymes with... Well, rhymes with we'll see. We'll see. Very good. Mm. See what you did there. Does it? Does it? Oh, it's Dan Carter. Um, okay. I uh, hate people. You know, who is it? I don't want them messaging me. Hopefully Dan Carter. All right. Hey, all that's left to do is for Drew to send us off. You know what? I went to the oh. Waratahs on Friday night. Hmm. And uh, as I was leaving the stadium, a few people were yelling out to me and going, Coco! <laughs> <laughs> were they? Yeah. That's your legacy. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was proud. Peace. G'day, please, if you like the show, well, show us you liked it by pressing like and subscribe so we can exist because we don't have any more money. We need your support and make sure you check out our other videos.